Martin from Secrets, the channel for learning about trading and investing. Welcome to Markets Next Week Weekly Stock Market Analysis Show. Where we look at the charts, technical charts, and then try to analyze and understand what happened in the market and then have a bit of clarity for the upcoming week and a better trade plan for the next coming week. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and share it with friends and colleagues so that you don't miss out on this every week. So, this is analysis that's starting from tomorrow. The week that's starting from tomorrow, Monday, September 4, 2023. Let's get into the charts. This is one view, it's a weekly view that you see for Nifty and the bank Nifty. Left side Nifty, right side bank Nifty. So we have been talking about uh, a breakout, you know, and that's, you know, we are in a breakout that's uh, ongoing. You can see a flag pattern, another flag pattern, and a third flag pattern. That's seen on, on both indices, you no? Know? And it's a cup, a rounding pattern, breakout at a seven, and it's ongoing. A retracement from after hitting very close to the all-time high levels of 20,046 about you know, a retracement from there is happening. That's extending from four to six percent of retracement after a twenty percent of rally. That's what is happening. So this is just to give an overview on what's happening before we dive into shorter time frames. So another weekly view, it's a parallel channel um, and retracement can clearly be seen after having broken out and um, moving above the 60% Fibonacci extension on the Nifty and Bank Nifty, above the 50% Fibonacci extension. This hit the resistance at the all-time high levels and then retraced. Bank Nifty retraced more than 23 Fibonacci uh, retracement levels. but um, uh, Nifty seems to have settled at the 23 Fibonacci retracement levels, and it's well contained within a parallel channel since since the long, uh, since the June of uh, 2022, since one year. You know, this is what is happening in the range, in a trendline parallel channel moving up in the top, uh, hit the resistance the top of the channel, retraced a bit. Bankfree has not reached the top, top of the channel before that itself retraced to almost the bottom. Nifty in midway, and looks like it is reversing and trying to. For the continue the rally. This is the daily view. This is a head and shoulder, short term, daily short term, left hand nephew and right side back. Both has head and shoulder bearish in nature patterns, necklines of which has been breached on both bank after decisively breached and then re 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 climb, you know, attempting to climb back to a climb. So the head and shoulder pa pattern is not at negative, it will be negative only at, uh, you know, uh, at the top of the shoulder, you know, that's uh, near to 19600 if that's. Price moves above that already. That list. and in the case of um, Bank Nifty, the head and shoulder negative bearish pattern is not um, uh, negated. It is not even climbed above the uh, neckline of that breakdown. It has already breached, and you know, in the case of Nifty, it has breached slightly and then immediately bounced up. So, but Nifty, Bank Nifty, it is evident that it's a clear breach, not to the extent of the target, but it's a clear breach and. Um, up moves what is happening. So that's a pattern that is seen. Also, you can see that the downfall of the retracement of uh, the four to six percent that we are talking about is well contained okay, okay, okay. in a trend line parallel channel. And we have hit the top of the channel once again. It's a third of the so sixth time that we are reaching the top of the channel. Bank of T is also almost very close to the top of the channel. So we need a breakout or a green close above the channel to have a close, uh, have a continuation of the rally. Also, you can see that the red color is uh, the moving average, exponential moving average. So, Nifty and the Bank Nifty both indices climbed and closed above the 20 exponential moving average. But the case of Bank Nifty has uh, failed to yet uh, close above the 50 exponential moving average, although it's closed above the 20 exponential moving average. This is resistance at the neckline zone of the head and shoulder. That's what we are. So, we were crucial support. We were the crucial support last week. We talked about that on both indices, and if you know. That support was the previous uh, resistance, which uh, uh, made it to act as a you know, support bounce, and then that's a change of variety bounce that seems to happen on both indices. And um, Bank of T, you no, know, both indices have made clear, you know, up move, but uh, there's some kind of resistance that's seen as a confluence of 20 and the 50 expansion coverage in the case of Bank of T. Solid moves. We'll analyze the candlestick separately. This is a weekly candle that you see clearly change variety bounce on weekly charts. There's a gap also here. And if you also support zone bounce since last two weeks, Nifty first week that the bounce is happening. So, wide range bullish candle seen on the Nifty and uh, a small body in this view with uh, very volatile moves on the upside and downside. Big size has indicated 
has happened with IMT. So that's a weekly candle, so the small body, small body indice volatile candle on the weekly and bank T and the white range bullish candle on the Nifty. weekly charts. Daily, daily charts are showing white range bullish candle on both time frames, on, on both the indices basically, right? Solid bullish move, solid opportunity will be low. No, pattern also is seen there. So candlesticks are clear bullish white range. No Friday move is what we can see there. And Bollinger Bands are showing that it's consolidation now. The contraction is happening and the contraction is a pretty moving average. Uh, you know, the price is closed above that. So it's bullish biased consolidation. Bullish biased consolidation on the bank and if you both. The contraction is what is happening. The expansion is paused for at least you know, the daily charts. So that's what Bollinger Bands are talking to us. I'm making note of this support resistance loss. This is Nifty charts that you've seen. The immediate resistance will be. Um, be seen at um, 419, uh, 465 so the previous swing high, you know, and then 19584, 19651, and 19867, and then 20,000 nearby zones. Downside, the supports could be seen at 19403, which is um, uh, moving average also, expansion moving average, and after that, you have 19294, 19223, 9201 is a gap support, so solid support suspected for its multiple weeks. That's pretty we have trouble there. Then 90,000 only number and then 18,951 is where the 100 expansion moving average is there. All right, that's a nifty resistance and support levels that you're seeing. Bank nifty you have the immediate resist resistance could be at that zone of 4463, 44, 400, 44, 44, 500. That zone is going to be a condition zone some resistance that's seen there above that you have 44500 then 44950 then 45000 rounding number 40100 then 45655 and 46369 and then 46500 that's resistances on the upside downside the first support would be the 100 expansion moving average support that's at 43945 so 44000 and 44151 could be also previous swing lows and then rounding number supports that can be seen above that so, once if 44,000 is breached, this is really below 43 and 45. Then you have 43,830 as a support, and then 43,592 as a support, and 43,367 and 43,000 down in number of support. So the expansion moving average is coming at 40. The, the expansion moving average 200 expansion moving average 200 support is coming at 42,950 nearby zones. That's the positions on the bank that you see there. Studying the, the momentum and the trend indicators. Left side we have Nifty Bank and right side is the Bank Nifty. Oh, it's not that. No. Downside you have the Bank Nifty and left side you have Nifty. So left side you have weekly charts and right side you have daily charts. So you can see that it's clearly you know, weekly bounces up from that support of momentum RSI. 60 is seen very clearly, but Bank Nifty is yet to you know, show that it is still in the bearish zone, in the sideways zone, basically not bearish, but rising up. Short term, it's still bearish, but it's taking a beautiful support of the RSI 40, both you know, Nifty and the Bank Nifty. So that's we are seeing with respect to the RSI momentum. Let's analyze it. So basically, sideways rising is the momentum in the short terms on both indices. Right? But bullish rising is the momentum that you see on the Nifty. The bank Nifty, it is sideways rising, it's not a bullish. Right? That's momentum has picked up. It is taken as support basically from the RSI 40 and that bounced up. Right? Momentum has Gain substantial in the last Friday's moves. Trend at the same time is not crossed over completely right? uh, from the bear zones or DMI negative zones. It's still um, in bearish momentum, but the bearishness is falling. That's you know, the, it's it's improving you know, on both time frames, uh, on both the uh, indices, Nifty and the Magnetic. The bearishness is falling, but it's still bearish negative zones. Trend does not cross over the bull zones on the no, shorter time frames and higher time frames is bullish on both indices. It's bullish, no, and the bullishness is also not having enough strength, it's falling. So that's one thing that is so. Trend is not really, you know, uh, trend is improved, of course, you know, from falling, it is, uh, you know, trend has improved substantially, but it is still not crossed over to the bull, bull zones yet, you know, but momentum has gained up. That's a summary, but yeah, so overall. Uh, momentum has improved, trend also has improved. Volatility 
is that your reaction has happened? Six percent down. Market moved up, and uh, Friday's move six percent. Momentum has slipped to eleven point three six low voltage regimes. Remove we had a twenty percent of a move in the momentum that has happened in the previous three weeks of time. So, India weeks has you no know, is the um, India fixed is the volatility indicator, and it has closed. Uh, it has fallen down six percent. Is uh, indicated that you, know, you can see that from the band that has happened after a twenty percent plus. Uh, um, move up when the market corrected and the moment was dipped substantially this from the short covering move on Friday. So short covering move is what you can see clearly on the Nifty Futures operators and the options operators for the September weekly expiry 7th uh, is also showing the PCI which is healthy, which is bullish 1.25 on Nifty 1.15 on magnitude. So it's Bullish PCR, bullish uh, bullishness is there, and the option interest on features and options both, and VIX has cooled off. This is what the options are for the next weekly expiry short. So the range is very narrow, 9300 or 9600 on Nifty, where the highest put and call rating is seen, 9400 or 9500 again narrow range, second highest put and call rating is seen. That 44,000 and 44,500 range on the bank Nifty is very narrow range. That's where the highest put and call rating is seen, 42,000 second highest put and second highest. Resistance seen at 45,000. That's a little wider range. Second, the magnitude. So, magnitude. So, people are betting on a very narrow range for the next week. Right? So, control is what can be seen from the OEA. But, bullish in nature because of the PCR for the options, uniquely expand. Short covering also is already we have seen that the futures OIA is showing that. So, overall, OIA is very positive. Let's now try to understand what the sectors did. This also uh, no, needs to be noted down. Right? We have a, a cross sector. Uh, revival that happened last week. IT, metal, auto, and reality all are bullish. Till last week, we did not have a single sector which is bullish on. Now we have these three sectors which are bullish in both time frames weekly and daily from the moment of brochure, you know, short term and medium the perspective. But the farmer and the FMC just had to uh, pick up and they have not done bad. This close flat for 0.1 and 0.5 percent. So look at the move in the IT. IT has been trying to break out of the consolidation. You know, it's a wide range bullish candle that has formed at 1.75% up. Metal is 5% up. Reality is 5.7% up. And auto is 7.4% breaking out of a flat pattern. Right? So flatation is seen only in the farm and the future. Let's look at the charts here briefly. So IT is having consolidation, breakout, wide range bullish. Momentum climbing into the bull zones on the board time frames. We can take long portions there. So Metals, you know, at the all time high level, wide range bullish, moment bullish, right? Breaking out, auto breaking out once again to the all time high levels of the flag pattern, breakout momentum, absolutely bullish. Pharma cooled up a little bit, mini flag, it's not broken the flag yet. There's a possibility that it can break out once again. Momentum is bullish. There's a divergence there. FMCG also, flag breakout has not happened. FMCG has done slightly bad, just like Pharma last week, but otherwise, bullish momentum is absolutely intact there. No, slight slip into the sideways there, but there's a divergence there, there's a bullishness there. The flag pattern is also there. <laughs> Until it bridges the neckline, you know, we can we can always solve for a comeback. So it's profit booking probably happening with the FMCG and the farm. So this was sector which was holding the market still now. Now the sector of rotation has happened and IT and uh, you know uh, metal has come back and auto has also joined. Reality also has come back. That's also a black breakout. So there's a flag pattern that is in the auto, the reality and pharma and uh, fmcg right auto fmcg and the reality the flag walked on and it's breaking out of the flag pattern bullish all are high in bullish so across the sector bullish moment exit for pharma and um, yep yeah, even pharma and fmcg also is bullish only in the moment only the last week if you see across sector revival return as well so there is clear bullishness even in the sectors now studying the heavyweight stocks that contribute maximum to the index hdfc bank bullish up moves again Bouncer from the support zones, no, momentum and trend is still sideways and still in the bearish zones in the trend prosperity, but no, yeah, it, it's it, it is not doing great sideways basically. HFC Bank, we're talking about Reliance, uh, oil prices spiked up in the cycle, slipped in the sideways from the bullish zones, and then as is a bank slight. Trying to come up and then consolidating at near the all time high levels of retracement, right? Momentum almost at the bull zones, you can see. Idea is done well, is breaking out of that and showing up in fee and um, you know, uh, TCS is slightly uh, sideways, uh, uh, but um, uh, in fee is heading towards the bull zones, although it's sideways and rising. 
they gained uh, momentum IT stocks like as usual it's consolidating sideways IDC is consolidating sideways or slipped in the moment sideways so this is something so the move has not happened in the heavy weights because the index heavy is not have heavy weight stocks have not done overall last weeks all of them are sideways all the sum you know all of them are sideways and indecisive you know, except for infi to have had performed that bit right so this is a concern why is the large caps so the index the, the index heavy weights not having done that great you know? although the cost sector you know up move and momentum pickup has happened that's not reflecting that much in you know in the index heavy weights right but hang on the bull zones is uh, is in fee and uh, itc icci and uh, lands but all of them are then you know uh, very tepid and then any time can slip in the sideways kind of situation so that's a worry point Moving on, the institutional participation FIS have been selling for the sixth consecutive week, 4,300 crores against 3,112 crores sold again. Last week also 4,000 crores were sold. So consistent selling from the FIS is a worry, but thank God areas are buying consistently and making the net institutional participation green. So 9,570 crores increased the buying last week. You can see the you know, DAS have been, domestic institutions have been buying derivatives. Net longs also has moved up from the FIDA last week. Institutional participation, although closing green, FI continuously selling is not good for the market. It's a worry point. The next analysis that we're going to do is the global markets, the currencies, and the global commodities, and you know the US indices and all that. But let's begin with the currency. The dollar has closed flat in this 3.06% up, so 104.26. It's it's a, it's um, the dollar is actually um, you can see there's a cup and handle it's trying to break out and then consolidating the neckline green up move flat flat up move green flat up move in this view bring out of cup and handle right so dollar didn't make much news last week so did the rupee usd and our currency also stayed flat close flat 0.08 percent of 82.66 rupee remains the weakest and it's you can see that it's in the top use use the nr is in the top of the selling wedge it is um, some intervention might have caused the last week's fall from the top all-time high level since an ascending wedge still remaining there since very long time september of 2022 onwards it's in that ascending wedge right so it's not uh, neither moving and breaking out of the 82 83.5 levels and nor it is breaking down of the 80 levels so it's in between playing it that narrow that's for long now here comes the crude it is breaking out and given a solid wide range bullish candles momentum rising in the bullish zones it's a worry that's where reliance is falling and then it could negatively impact the oil market companies but the economy also it is not good to have a weak rupee and a rising crude concern 7.6 percent of oil right. and gold also has spiked up Gold spikes up means people are shifting the money from markets with this. That's also a concern. But gold as a hedge instrument, uh, it's good that it's spiking up. It's a cup and handle in the top and hit the resistance. So basically, it just had to break out of the cup and handle and then take out the resistance zone between 1997 to 2075. Right? But otherwise, momentum is still sideways and rising up. That's what gold is. We want to use markets. Dow Jones. Green, so overall green, one to three percent of green moves. What's in Dow Jones rising up? Momentum is not climbed the bull zone set, but rising momentum, bullish candle. Uh, Nasdaq wide range bullish candle, momentum taking a support of the RSI 60 and then bouncing up bullish as NP 500 into the bullish zone once again. And wide range bullish candle. So overall, we can see that it's such a resistance zone, you know, descending wedges that I've seen on all the dice and then. No, uh, uh, it has been attempted to break out from that and then you know, try it three, four weeks and then fall down and then attempting once again getting towards that. So, we can close the US market. So, that's around 2.5 SMP final, 1.45 on Dow Jones and 3.6% on the NASDAQ. That's the kind of green moon in the US market that has happened, right? Or a market. That's about general sense. Two stock picks for the next week. Tata Steel seems to be in an inverted head and shoulder within a parallel channel and almost at the top of that. Ebeco fund here 
could be as rewarding as 148 or 150 levels it can go up there positionally it can you can trail from there but it's swing trade because the momentum in the bullish the momentum is bullish and the trend is also strong bullish Umbro reality is uh, consolidating within a parallel channel and broken out from the channel and it could go towards the top of the channel right uh, uh, much above the high you know 1 to 25 kind of like moment is bullish trend is bullish volumes are over average on both so upper reality long that is still also long now this is a payoff chart for a change it is not the double uh, double diagonal counter sprint it's a bad match strategy so basically we are selling twice than the buys right one is to two and then taking head pushes on the both put and call sides right you can see that we are selling 9700 and we are selling 9300 these are the two points then we are buying inside 9350 and 9650 call 9350 is put we are buying that with lesser quantity half the quantity of what we are sold and then hedge portions are there at 19,000 and 20,000 right to get the leverage and everything so property property is good the range is good the double diagonal calendar spread was not giving range given the low premiums that we have that's why this strategy is taken but slightly more exp expensive uh, compared to on the brokerage side but uh, it costs only one lakh per one lot per one uh, set, you know, set up you can increase portion size you can make it one you know uh, two is to one then you can four is to two like that you can increase portion size as per your risk appetite so a very good range of 9200 and 9765 it's very less likely that it's getting pushed. 9200 also can be a very good support zone, it's a major support zone. So, very good range that we are getting in this Batman strategy. Right, so here the thing is, we would anyway have a you know, consistent profit within this range, and if it is spiking up, then also we have the benefit. But outside the range, you just sort of get out of it, that's the best option because with um, more number of legs, it's difficult to uh, adjust, it's possible to adjust, but it's really difficult. The better. Take the loss and get out of it if it breaches this 19760. That means it's trending market, right? Non directional log work. But you know, 80% or 90% of the time, the market does not trend. You know? It retraces or it consolidates. And you know, only a few days it, con it breaks out. So, for a few weeks it breaks out. In that period, if you're trying to adjust and then, you know, and if it's a big mega breakout of 500 points and above, then it's better to exit and then take the loss and then. Put a new strategy for next week's right that's all so this is completely risk defined you know what you're going to lose max per lot right so that's that's strategy for the next week now that you study different uh, patterns and analyze different aspects of data charts etc let's conclude and wrap it up the market was paused last week Paused from what Paused from the replacement and then it's showing a short covering move and it's, it's taken as support Previous support zones bouncing up from the price and its momentum support also you know, it's bouncing up from there and it's basically going with consolidation mode as in the body bands. And this is after a reversal of 4 to 7% about the license after a rally of 90-20% from the breakout of cup and hand rounding, all that things. Right. Now the bullish candle patterns and see wide range bullish on the flat is move, CIP bounce and a close above the moving average resistances. Momentum is rising in trend, you know, from the support of momentum RSI 40. Open interest short covering is in the futures and bullish uh, PCR is seen at the OI. Bollinger Japan is an indication bullish bias consolidation. US markets are showing green, you know, 2 to 3 percent of up moves there. All this gives hopes for the bulls that the correction may be over now and the rally may continue. On the other side, the FIS have sold off for the sixth consecutive week. The momentum and the trend is still short term sideways only. It's not it's sideways rising but not in the bull zones yet. Price action of the HN this price action, the lower low, lower high, and the trend head and shoulder patterns are not yet negated it's still valid until that levels are negated above 19650 zones you still have trouble so all this uh, gives hope for the base that the selling pressure could you know um, have you know, more selling pressure can come in as it try to take out that so that's what the viewers will be hoping for so 46 percent or 20 percent of up move is not a big thing so there is a possibility that the market is going so Look at the charts and the kind of move that happened last week. I'll take a mild bullish, not a moderator, no, big bullish view. My view will be mild bullish. I may go wrong. 
but even if I'm wrong, it may be only a neutral or sideways move, may not be bearish. Look at the Friday's move that has happened. So, global queues, interest uh, hike, inflation, Fed rates, and all these uncertainties are still there, so you have to be cautious about that. Crude is creating trouble once again, spiking above the top of the channel, and it is a weak rupee. So, this you have to be very, very cautious about that. Right. So, levels for the next week is 19,000 to 19,800 for the Nifty, 43,500 to 45,500 on the bank. And if 9,243,000 is kept intact, bulls can hop for a rally at some point in time. If that is breached, then we have more trouble. It's going to be serious correction that may come in. Till now, it's not serious. 5% is okay. So always have your overnight risk protected with hedge positions. No direction strategies will you know, have risk defined. You know, you'll still be in the game. You know, capital will not get wiped out if you're taking hedges. Let's do that. And also, this option strategies can be used for making rental income regularly. With the help of ops, you know, covered calls and cash rocket pools and strategies, all that. All these different strategy videos are there separately in the playlist. You can check out that. In them. Right. So that's it. My view is my view is mild bullish for the next week. You want the candles and patterns. Rombo market is at, you know, not, not negated the resistance is above. Not resistance uh, taken out the price uh, uh, bearish patterns yet, but a good uh, bounce up from the support zone has happened. So I'm mildly bullish about that. Also, make a note of these uh, social media channels. I tweet regularly every day, multiple chart analysis patterns are all posted here. So, subscribe to this. If you want to avail the Telegram channel, then you can click on the link. And subscribe and share to your friends and colleagues. If you're not subscribed, please do that right away. Thanks for, thanks for your support. Happy trading, happy learning, happy investing. Bye bye.